Brandy with Brandy Reads. Today's book is going to be The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. This book was really fantastic. It's historical fiction. Uh, the main character's name is Cussie Mary. She is from um, Troublesome Creek in Kentucky. She is the last of the blue people. I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard of the Kentucky blue people. I'm not sure if that's where Kentucky blue comes from or not might be something interesting to look up but she is the last of the the Kentucky blue people and yes it's a real thing it's a medical condition that causes it by the way and it explains more about that in the book so I'm not giving anything away you can you can look that up too but she's the last but she's also a traveling librarian she is a pack horse librarian with the Roosevelt um, President Roosevelt set up the Kentucky Pack Horse Library for women to travel and be librarian in the mountains of Kentucky. Uh, it started in 1935. This book takes place in 1936. So Cassie has been a traveling librarian for a little less than a year um, when we first meet her in this story. It's her story of living in the mountains in Kentucky, but it's a good representation of what life was like in the 1930s and 40s and earlier in the area where she lives at. So Cassie is a blue person and blue people were discriminated against, discriminated against back in that time just as they were considered colored people. Uh, I, I, you know, this isn't a, a political thing. I don't agree with what happened back then, but it's just the way things were. I'm, uh, so I'm not condoning that or, or agreeing with that or anything. I'm just stating facts of this is how things were. And even the blue people of Kentucky were discriminated against because of their color. And it wasn't anything that they um, could help. It was a genetic defect, actually. Um, Cussie is named after the town in France where her great-grandfather moved from and he moved from France to Kentucky. He was an orphan and in his adult life moved from France to Kentucky, married a Kentucky lady. They ended up having blue children so it's like one of those one in a million things that would have never happened had it not been for genes that they carried. Cussie's story we pick up she's 18 where we where we meet her at in the story her mother has passed away her dad is bound and determined to get her married and settled as he put it um, because he had promised Cussie's mother that he would see her married and settled she however does not want to get married the pack horse librarians was only only single women were allowed to be pack horse librarians and that's kind of significant for that time. Uh, single women didn't have a lot of job opportunities back then, but these were some really brave women. These women signed up to ride a horse five days a week and deliver books up mountains, cross rivers, in the hollers and coves of nowhere. Like they they were out there in in the wilderness there's bears and snakes and mountain lions and pretty much any other thing you can think of and occasionally bad things happen to these um and, and not not by you know not on purpose but you know accidents happen so it was a really brave thing for these women um, but it also showed not just their bravery and their courage in saying yes this is what i want to do i want to be a pack horse librarian part of it was was desperation part of it was i have to have a means of taking care of myself i've either been widowed or whatever my husband ran away or like jobs were really hard to find and especially in the mountains jobs in the mountains uh, especially for me unless they were coal miners um, and then still there's only so many positions there that are available Plus, coal mining was dangerous, so a lot of men would leave their families at home in the mountains, go to the cities to find jobs, and once they had the money saved up, they would move their families out to them. But sometimes that didn't happen. Sometimes they just left and didn't come back. So these women, yes, they were brave and courageous, 
but part of it was desperation. Part of it was I have no other means to take care of myself and I have to do something. The circumstances and everything else, this just speaks volumes of these women. I also think it speaks greatly of President Roosevelt for his insight into the need for this service. Schools were readily available in the cities. It was law by then, uh, just as it is today. I'm not sure how long it had been law at the time, but it was law at that time that children had to go to school, that, that once children reached school age, they had to attend school. But if there's no schools, how do you get your kids to the schools? So it was, it was this do what you gotta do kind of thing. And so people in the mountains of Kentucky, most of them homeschooled their children. There was one very isolated school, so if you could get to it, you could go to it. If you couldn't get to it, you didn't go. And the, the pack horse librarians filled this really huge void that was just, just it, there was just a need for their services. So the larger libraries in the larger cities, Seattle, Philadelphia, um, Louisville, they would pack up the books that they didn't need, had duplicates of, whatever. Their patrons aren't going to use them anymore because they're old and look rough. So they're replacing them. So they send all of this stuff that they don't use anymore by train to smaller outposts in smaller towns for the library services. So they would pack that up. The, the train company had an agreement with the libraries that they would ship it for free since they were already going to these places anyway, so they would just ship it and deliver it for free. So the li these li the bigger libraries would discard stuff and what they discarded, the smaller outposts would get. Well, then the librarians would come to the outposts and go through the stuff, swap out what they had that, like, that they had previously gotten and carried to patrons. And then when they would, they would, it was just on a rotation and a swapping out kind of thing. And they would always like send stuff back or like and not really send stuff back to the larger libraries but send stuff on down to further outposts so there was just the circulation going to keep things kind of fresh but they were still limited on their resources so they would get boy scout magazines um, good housekeeping magazines newspapers which were horribly out of date by the time that they got to the outposts they would get the health department pamphlets that, you know, hygiene and medical care and, and home remedy stuff that was really valuable for these people that lived out in the mountains that couldn't afford health care and couldn't get to doctor's offices and couldn't, I mean, most of them never even left the mountains. They lived in the mountains. They grew it, they hunted it, they trapped it or they raised it and that was the only food source that they had. There were no trips to the grocery store. There were no, we're going to run to McDonald's and pick up something for dinner. Those things didn't exist. The book takes place in 1936 and that's during the Great Depression, but the people in Kentucky in the mountains had no clue that there was even a depression going on. They were already so poor and so deprived and so hungry, they didn't, they couldn't tell any different. And I think for me that's just really sad. Like I have had some some difficult times in life and, and had my own personal struggles in life that we all have to deal with, but I can't imagine the circumstances that they've had to live in. There was no running water, there were no no electricity, no 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 vehicles. It was horses, mules, donkeys, or your feet. The creek was the closest running water you had. And hopefully no one had built an outhouse upstream or the local coal mine wasn't contaminating it. These are just the conditions these people lived in. Some of them fared better than others. Some of them didn't. Uh, there's really some heartbreaking side characters in this novel that I, even though you only see them a few times, you still love them. You still get attached to them and you still, your, your heart still breaks for their story. At least mine did, anyways. It, and, and and part of it is because how their story is affecting Cussie, because she it's it's ultimately they're all part of her story, her interactions with them, her relationships with them, 
uh, it was a hard life. It, it was a really hard life. So these people have struggled for everything that they have, even though it's not much. They have still scraped and struggled for it to have it. And, and sometimes it's just not enough. But Cussie's story as a book woman, as a traveling librarian, her life intermingles with these people and she gets to know these people and gets to know these stories of these people even though she's a blue person and even though she's discriminated against and 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 even shunned um, in some places um, by, by some people in her area she still has an impact on their lives whether she most of the time she doesn't even realize the impact that she's having because she takes this life and she does it with such grace and I think a lot of people today forget how to do life with grace or maybe have never even seen how to do life with grace I think that's pretty big I, I don't even know I like that's the best way I know how to describe it or explain it it's just taking what you have accepting it for what it is and going on you have it and you have to deal with it Standing up and pitching a fit and flopping in the floor is not going to fix it or change anything, so you do what you have to do. That's grace. That is living life with grace. That is, I'm not going to stand here with my hand out expecting somebody to give it all to me. This is what I have. This is what I have to deal with. This is how I'm going to take care of it. And I think that's been, I think that's been a big thing that's been lost in our culture these days is, is doing life with grace, no matter the circumstances. And I really love her story, getting to know her and getting to know her story and the way she affects people just by doing life with grace. So she's the traveling librarian for the town. Uh, well, not even really the town. The town has access to the outpost and they can get there whenever they want to. She lives in the mountains. She has a route five days a week, so Mondays is one route, Tuesdays is another route. So she sees these people on a weekly basis and gets to know them and, and she really impacts their lives, but not just because she's the librarian. The need of the librarian, they were sorely, sorely needed. She she even visited the, the school that was way up in the mountains. It took her most of the day of traveling on horseback to get there, well actually muleback, to get there, the children would get so excited that she's come to bring them new reading materials. Like other people, other patrons along her routes would be excited that she was coming. Cause she, the, the librarians, not just Cussie, but all of the librarians, it, if the need was there, then they would help teach their patrons how to read. They would bring materials appropriate for the reading level that they were at. They would help teach them new words. They would help just however they needed to help. And they would make these scrapbooks that I had no clue about, but is really, really cool. So these scrapbooks are made by the librarians using their own resources. Um, the, the Pack Horse Library Project does not help pay for these scrapbooks or buy the materials for these scrapbooks but these ladies because they love their job and they love their patrons so much they take their time and their resources to make these scrapbooks and these scrapbooks are made out of newspaper clippings and magazine articles but they're also um, their patrons help contribute to these scrapbooks they they give them recipes that they've tried or made up and liked. They give them new like cleaning tips if they find something that works better for something that they've been doing or, or using or whatever. They pass that along. It's, it's their way of passing along information to other patrons and other people in the mountains. Uh, new dress patterns, new sewing techniques, new trapping techniques, new how to, wait, how, how to make new fishing rods is in the Boy Scouts um, magazines. Those kinds of things, like those things that are really important to these people in the mountains who are so isolated from everything. These things are really important and to be able to pass this along and share this with people that they wouldn't normally interact with is huge. I mean like and it helps 
the community like it, it helps everyone in the mountains and it's a it's a great way to just pass along information and these women take their time on their off days or at night to make these scrapbooks and, and make them however they can. As Cussie is the librarian, the last of the blue people, she thinks this is it for her life. She thinks this is, and it's all she wants for her life. She is content being the last of the blue people and being a pack horse librarian. She's content. She makes $28 a month to be a pack horse librarian and has taken a vow of poverty more or less from the government like this is, is it's a government job and and has agreed to the $28 a month that she gets and it's part of their agreement with the government when they take their jobs that they have to um, give directions to their house for um, inspectors to come by and make sure that they're not living above their means or so again they have to make an agreement with the government that they to be poor more or less and that it's it's basically a vow of poverty for them um, they have to leave their cabinets open um, at all times to show that there's no stockpile of food if a government inspector comes by to inspect the home where they live <laughs> that that just kind of blew my mind I'm like what is going on like the whole purpose of a job is so that you don't starve to death and yes it's $28 a month so it's not a whole lot and granted cost of living was much less back then but still it's less than a dollar a day that these ladies make to deliver books in dangerous treacherous conditions and places it's beyond me it blows my mind literally blows my mind but they did it because they loved it or they were desperate or both and I, I, I still have to try to wrap my mind around that because I'm just like oh my gosh can't even imagine today I'm, I'm pretty sure people would flip out o over that like your internet think of the your internet bill costs you more than $28 a month I'm uh, pretty sure your phone bill costs you more than $28 a month so, so wrap your mind around the conditions that these people lived in. Their cost of living was really low because they had no electricity, they had no running water. All of these amenities that we take for granted, they they didn't even have. But on top of, they take these jobs because they desperately need them for the money to provide food for their families and still it's not even enough to do that. So it's kind of crazy for me uh, that it's that extreme of conditions. But anyway, so Cussie's content being a librarian, being the bookwoman, being the last of the blue people, and just living out her life. And she, while yes, she is shunned or discriminated against by some people, she's made such an impact in other people's lives that she doesn't realize just how much they value her and just how much she means to them. Just in their interactions with her bringing them books and stuff, she, she hasn't realized just what she means to these people in her area that she has interactions with on a weekly basis. And I think it's really great to see, like, to see those relationships grow and, and how they each affect each other like they're affecting her lives like she's affecting their lives so it's just, it's just this great interaction to see these characters build and grow off of each other but to really be there when they need each other I think that's a big thing and I think that's, that's, that's one of another one of our lost things a lost part of our culture today is we have so much social media and everybody's like so involved with social media but we're not really social we don't interact one-on-one -on -one with individuals on a daily basis. We message them, we Snapchat them, we text them. Even phone calls have become a thing of the past almost. Like you very rarely just pick up a phone and call somebody. That used to be an everyday thing. You just picked up the phone and called people daily 
because that was your interaction with them. Now it's, I don't have to call them, I can just text them or send them a Snapchat or message them on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And we lose that real one-on-one -on -one connection. And I think that is such a huge message in this book. And that may not even be the point of this book is to get that message across, but I think it just shows through so well in this story that it just, human interaction is important. And with that human interaction, we forget what kind of impact we can have on each other's lives. And I think that's a big thing. I think we're made for interaction with other people, with other individuals. It, it feeds us. We need that interaction as people. It helps us grow. It helps us be better. It helps us maintain our humanity, really. I mean, like, you can become cold and calloused and uncaring without that interaction. So th those interactions are, are definitely important even today. But I love that that shows through in this story. And again, I don't think that was the intent of the author was to, like, drive that message home. It just came through. It was so poignant and, and well written. It just shows through and, and it's the mark of a good author right there. Just getting things to show through, whether by intent or that's just how it happens. It's still, it's well written. So yes, I definitely love this book and it's definitely worth the read. And Cussie does get her happy ending, even if it's not necessarily the happy ending you think she should get or you want her to get it does end well for her uh, which I was pleased about I mean, because you do you, you you root for her you, you get invested in her character so you definitely want her to have a happy ending yes there's some heartbreaking things that happen throughout the story and yes definitely love this book definitely worth the read it's great it's well written character development's great love just the story, just just the history that is so intertwined in the story. I mean, yes, it's fiction, but the history is true and the history is there. And I think that's important. I, I think if you're going to do a historical fiction, it needs to be pretty accurate to history. And it, she really got that. She really nailed that. And I really, really like that. There's some author's notes at the end of the book that I think are pretty interesting to read where she got some of her information. And there's even a few dates that she um, changed some timelines on, but she explains like when they really happened and um, why she changed them so that they would fit into the story better, but it's still great. If this is your first time joining us, hope you liked it, hope you enjoyed it. Um, hit subscribe and the bell below so you can get your notifications. Give us a thumbs up, we always like thumbs up. Um, check out some of our other videos. My husband will post something somewhere. One of these places. You can tap on it. See a different video. I guess that's it. Everybody have a great day. Bye.